Each launch is about learning more and more about what's needed to make life multiplanetary um, and to improve Starship to the point where it can be taking ultimately hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people uh, to Mars. Recent SpaceX flights suggest that Starship Block 2 is facing significant challenges. This raises a common question. Why doesn't the company just move on to Block 3? After all, that's the version Starship is ultimately headed toward, right? Well, there's actually a good reason SpaceX should continue to fly Block 2 right now. First, let's quickly run through the problems Starship Block 2 is currently facing. It has encountered several serious setbacks. During flights 7 and 8, the vehicle suffered rapid unscheduled disassembly less than 10 minutes after liftoff. Flight 7's failure was caused by intense vibrations in the engine compartment, which led to fuel leaks and fires. Flight 9 showed improvement, flying significantly farther. SpaceX maintained contact with the vehicle for about 46 minutes. However, the mission still ended in failure, this time due to a leak in the main tank. Debris from the vehicle likely ended up in the Indian Ocean. By comparison, the Super Heavy booster has been performing more reliably. On Flight 7 and 8, the booster successfully returned to Starbase for dramatic catch attempts using the launch tower's chopstick arms. Notably, the same booster from Flight 7 was reflown on Flight 9, marking a significant milestone for SpaceX's reusability goals. However, there was no recovery attempt on Flight 9. The booster broke apart during a planned hard splashdown. The cause is still under investigation, with oversight from the FAA. Most recently, Ship 36 exploded during a static fire test at the Massey test site. According to Elon Musk, preliminary data suggests that a nitrogen COPV composite overwrapped pressure vessel in the payload bay failed below its proof pressure. If that's accurate, the failure might not be due to the ship itself, but rather a flaw in a buy-in component. Still, it has raised concerns about how SpaceX handles and inspects COPVs at Starbase. There has been a lot of discussion about how to fix the issues with Starship Block 2, and so far the most efficient solution appears to be moving on to version 3. This new version includes numerous upgrades over Block 2, but the most significant improvement lies in its propulsion system, which is designed to be far more robust. This is a critical factor in addressing the recurring problems. At the heart of version 3 is the Raptor 3 engine. It has been engineered to eliminate the need for a traditional heat shield around the engine bay. This not only reduces mass at the base of the vehicle, but also increases reliability. For instance, if a small fuel leak occurs, the escaping fuel is expected to simply burn off in the surrounding plasma during flight, posing far less risk. In contrast, with engines enclosed in a sealed compartment, as in Block 2, any leak can quickly become dangerous. With the Ship 36 incident severely damaging the Massey test site, SpaceX is now faced with the need to rebuild. But this also presents an opportunity. Rather than restoring the site just to support the remaining two Block 2 Starship prototypes, they could instead use this moment to shift focus and construct infrastructure compatible with Block 3. This could be the right time to fully transition to the next version of Starship. Flying the last two Block 2 vehicles might offer short-term data, but choosing to move forward now and beginning work to convert Launchpad A for Block 3 could yield faster long-term progress. Getting Pad A ready sooner would accelerate the launch cadence of Block 3 flights, which is especially important as refueling missions become a key part of the program. In the bigger picture, it just makes sense. However, it does not appear that SpaceX plans to scrap the remaining Starship prototypes. In fact, the company seems eager to push forward with testing and use them in upcoming flights. Even though the test stand at Massey was completely destroyed, a Starship transport stand was recently spotted near Pad A. SpaceX plans to use this transport stand as an adapter, enabling static fire testing to take place directly on Launch Pad A. Integrating the transport stand onto the launch mount could be relatively straightforward. The team will need to modify the base of the stand 
to make it compatible with the booster clamp system on the orbital launch mount. Currently, extensive grinding, cutting, and welding work is underway to prepare the stand before lifting it onto the mount for static fire testing of Ship 37. SpaceX clearly isn't waiting around for the next flight, but why the rush? Why not wait until the Massey site is repaired or until version 3 is fully ready? Could it be that Starship Block 2 still has something valuable to offer that we don't fully understand yet? Let's take a look at the timeline. Elon Musk recently stated there's a 50% chance SpaceX could send the first uncrewed starships to Mars as early as next year. However, realistically, that estimate leans more toward optimism than probability. Still, the Mars mission isn't the only major milestone ahead. Another key mission expected next year is the first propellant transfer demonstration, where a starship will dock with a tanker ship in orbit and transfer propellant. This is something that has never been done before at this scale. This demonstration is critical to the Human Landing System program, part of NASA's Artemis mission, which is targeting a crewed lunar landing the following year. In short, SpaceX is facing a tight and ambitious schedule. Not only must they pioneer in-orbit refueling, an unprecedented feat in spaceflight, but they also need to deliver a modified version of Starship as a fully functional lunar lander. The clock is ticking, and the Starship program has little room for delays. Another important aspect is Starship Block 3, which is expected to fly later this year. However, as with many SpaceX timelines, that estimate comes from Elon Musk and should be taken with caution. Block 3 will feature the upgraded Raptor 3 engine, but progress on that front does not seem to be moving as quickly as SpaceX might have hoped. In recent months, there have been signs of Raptor 3 engines failing during static fire tests at McGregor. This is not necessarily a bad thing. It is a normal part of SpaceX's development process. They pushed many Raptor 2 engines to failure before gaining the performance and reliability they needed. It is possible the Raptor 3s are being deliberately tested to their limits. However, it is also possible that the new design is facing real challenges. In addition, the infrastructure to support Block 3 is not fully ready yet. The good news is that most of the critical components are in place. This includes the orbital launch and integration tower the newly redesigned orbital launch mount, which now features a water-cooled steel plate beneath it, unlike Pad A, and the flame trench, a reinforced channel designed to safely deflect heat and exhaust during liftoff. The bottom line is, there is no certainty that all the pieces of Block 3, hardware, infrastructure, and engine, will come together on the expected timeline. And even when Block 3 flies, there is no guarantee it will immediately solve the issues seen in Block 2, with only two Block 2 starships likely remaining. It makes sense that SpaceX wants to extract as much data as possible from them, not just about collecting data to solve existing problems, but also about testing other upgrades, like the new heat shield and the redesigned forward flaps. Those flights could help identify the core issues and provide valuable lessons that carry over into the development of Block 3. So yes, SpaceX will likely attempt to fly the two remaining Block 2 starships before the end of this year. These vehicles are expected to undergo static fire tests on a temporary test stand, which in this case is the launch pad itself. That might sound a bit risky, but it is actually a reasonable approach. Once Block 3 is introduced, the launch pad will need to be rebuilt or significantly upgraded anyway. Additionally, the pad is much more resilient to potential explosions than a traditional static fire stand. It features extensive shielding and very few components are exposed aside from a few quick disconnects. The tank farm is also better protected there thanks to the blast wall and the increased distance from the pad. So, at least if something does go wrong, it won't be as bad as what happened at Massey. While the Starship program is currently facing some setbacks, SpaceX has just achieved something truly remarkable. On July 2nd, a Falcon 9 rocket lifted off once again from Cape Canaveral, successfully delivering another batch of Starlink satellites into orbit. Although such missions have become routine, this particular launch caught the attention of space enthusiasts worldwide 
because it marked the 500th Falcon 9 launch. This milestone includes all versions of the Falcon 9. Out of those 500 missions, only two ended in failure, with one additional flight classified as a partial failure, focusing solely on the Block 5 variant, which is the current version in operation. It has now completed 444 flights with just one failure, giving it an outstanding reliability rate of 99.8%. Although a few rockets in the history of spaceflight have never experienced a failure, none come close to Falcon 9 in terms of total launch count. Its consistency and reliability are unmatched. The numbers are equally impressive when it comes to booster recovery. Out of 467 landing attempts, 456 were successful, which translates to a 97.6% success rate. SpaceX has far exceeded its original goal of reusing a booster 10 times. Currently, Booster B-1067 holds the record with 29 flights, an extraordinary achievement. These accomplishments are even more impressive when you consider that no other private company or national space agency has yet mastered the routine return and reuse of orbital-class rocket stages. This success has enabled SpaceX to build out its Starlink Internet constellation, which now includes over 7,000 active satellites. In addition to that, Falcon 9 has launched thousands of payloads for commercial and government customers, dozens of interplanetary missions, and 68 astronauts aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Falcon 9's reputation for reliability has only increased demand. In 2022, it launched 60 times. In 2023, the number rose to 91. And in 2024, it reached an incredible 132 launches. So far in 2025, Falcon 9 has already flown 83 times, and SpaceX aims to complete up to 160 launches by the end of the year. At this pace, what once seemed impossible may soon become reality. The thousandth Falcon 9 launch is no longer a distant dream, but a milestone that is well within reach. And who knows, the future of flying 1,000 starships every year is not so far off either. If you've made it this far, I truly appreciate your time and interest. I'm glad to know this video has been helpful to you. We're on our way to reaching our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so feel free to support us by hitting the subscribe button. It really makes a big difference. Thank you.